Christian Livingstone here, and we're about to do the demo uh, after the bench adjustments, after the cone replacements, after all of that stuff of arcane knowledge. Uh, we're ready to demo. And uh, like I said, I've already mowed a property with this before I did the finer adjustments, just because I knew those bushings would seed in, and it was so close to begin with. Uh, but now we've done a little finer tuning, and I'm just going to show you, you know, how it runs out, same speed, uh, the uh, levers all the way forward, so the tracking's right, and then the, uh, the torquiness, the responsiveness, and just the general overall uh, ease of use and uh, the symmetry and balance. You know, we're not going to do a, a rumba or a tango on this thing, but uh, maybe a waltz, you know? Here we go. subtle adjustments I could make but perfectly usable right now and as a matter of fact I'm going to use it I'm probably going to go down the street uh, around the corner and uh, start cutting with it. This is a, an older friction drive with the cones and the disc cups and uh, they're pretty uh, outdated now nearly obsolete but uh, this one's been a fun uh, uh, unit for me to have it's zero turn it's uh, I've upgraded the deck and uh, uh, replaced the cones uh, five or six years ago, put a, a V-twin motor on it, and I've done videos on this uh, uh, on the YouTube channel. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a fun project of mine, but uh, I had a problem recently, and uh, it, it was a second problem I had. The first problem I had uh, was about two months ago, uh, uh, the center shaft, it uh, started stripping out uh, in the keyway down where the uh, drive pulley was, so... Uh, I replace that, and uh, that usually uh, includes uh, replacing the uh, the cones because that shaft, the cones are usually seized on, and you got to cut the shaft usually. But uh, I was able to uh, uh, get the cones off the shaft without uh, damaging them in any way, and and so I could reuse them. They they really weren't the problem. But I had uh, purchased two cones uh, just because I thought, well, you know, they'll probably, uh, uh, you know, break and uh, uh, coming off there or be seized on the shaft and just be too problematic. Uh, but, uh, you know, five or more years ago when I did put those cones on, I did uh, put some anti-seize on the shaft and uh, so they, they came off. And uh, I decided to use the old cones when I put the uh, new shaft in but I still have the uh, new cones, and here's one of them. But uh, the second problem I had was, uh, you know, just on the next street over, I, I just moved from there uh, a couple months ago as well, and uh, uh, I still mow a couple of properties over there. And I was doing that yesterday. Uh, each of them were a one-acre property, and uh, uh, when I was uh, rolling down the street on, on this mower, uh, it's, you know, it's a good quarter mile block and uh, the uh, street slopes down to the uh, gutter and curb area, so, you know, the water runs off and, you know, it was, I was straddling that uh, uh, 
that uh, slope uh, and uh, that causes a mower like this to, you know, you only have to lever on the right side, you know, since you're, you're straddling the slope and uh, you just have to lay on the lever and uh, one on one side. And I was a little uncomfortable with that because, you know, I thought, eh, that's putting a lot of undue stress, uh, you know, hitting it hard on one. And uh, sure enough, uh, by the time I got near the end of the block, there was a tink, tink, and it sounded like a, a nut or a bolt dropped off, and uh, I lost nearly all the power on that side, and uh, and I did uh, uh, retrieve uh, what had uh, come off uh, down below, and lo and behold, it was the cone. The cone had started to uh, obliterate, you know, the, the skirt of it had, I guess I was running it so hard on that side that... Uh, you know, it uh, it just broke broke it off down below. I was able to you know limp my way back. It just didn't have much power because it didn't have as much to grab onto. So you know, I've got combs. I just happen to have them uh, handy, and uh, uh, happily that uh, you know is a problem. That it, it's just going to create this opportunity to share more about that. Now, interestingly, already you can notice on the newer cone that the skirting is taller. You see how this is the side that broke in the skirting. That's about a quarter of an inch, and this is closer to a half an inch, three-eighths of an inch, but uh, that uh, is taller, taller than that. by It's about double. So this may have been a, a manufacturing uh, update, you know. There's other things about this I can tell you and will tell you that uh, are different as well. I'm going to go back in and, and capture some more video of uh, stuff that isn't in the literature, stuff that, uh, you know, I've learned. And even when I was doing that shaft uh, uh, replacement, uh, there was stuff that uh, uh, I encountered and discovered that would be helpful that you won't get here because you can follow in the literature, you know, this stuff and you'll... And, you'll miss it. You'll miss some subtle things. You can follow each one of the steps, put it all together and still have a problem. I mean, a real problem. You know, a bearing failure or some key way uh, uh, stripping out. So, uh, you know, I've learned a few things that aren't in here and I'll try to pass them along in a way that, uh, you know, you can get it too. So, you know, you still need to use your noggin uh, and not just, you know, follow the literature. Okay, here's a quick peek at the uh, transaxle. It's uh, semi-unfitted right now. The uh, uh, four main bolts underneath uh, uh, have been removed. They're a 9 16 head and the uh, two uh, tie rod uh, ball joint uh, for the steering uh, levers uh, have been uh, disconnected. Uh, and then uh, I've driven the uh, uh, the uh, roll pins out uh, for these uh, brake mechanisms and other uh, idler uh, uh, release uh, mechanisms and then the rod has to come out here that uh, uh, straddles the uh, whole uh, uh, compartment here because this this won't come out uh, without it you know it looks like you can almost get it but uh, now nah, and in the literature this has to come out so uh, once you get it to this point uh, and it doesn't take too long. Also, of course, I took the uh, chains for the sprockets out on both sides. But that's pretty much it. Uh, the 3304. So, you know, these clusters are different than the earlier ones. Uh, and uh, it, it doesn't necessarily generalize with the older ones. Now, this is a, a 1995 uh, 3304. And... They stopped making them, I don't know, around 2000, but then they came back uh, another couple of years later and made them for another couple of years. So there's some subtle differences between those two batches, the uh, 90s models and the 2000 models, but they're, they're, the, the differences are quite slight. So things will generalize between those two batches of these uh, units. But, uh, underneath there's a... A bar that uh, comes across and seems like it, it gets in the way of uh, uh, removing those bolts underneath but uh, they'll get out of your way you just wiggle it in there if you've got a, a socket that isn't uh, uh, you know too bulky and there it is out and uh, 
you know, I quickly uh, put all the uh, uh, things back on the rod to keep it oriented well, just uh, for, for my reference. I've done this enough that I know how they go, but I still, I keep them uh, all together on the rod. Otherwise, uh, I use a, a battery shutoff switch uh, right there, but uh, uh, if you don't have one, of course, uh, disconnect the battery. Even though I've, uh, of course, uh, removed the deck, uh, uh, you know, if you don't uh, remove the battery, there's a chance, you know, when you're turning wrenches and stuff, you can uh, uh, jump the solenoid there and, uh, you know, start the motor or sh get a little shock uh, charge going on your your wrench so uh, you know be careful that that will be hot unless you uh, disconnect the battery or or use the battery shutoffs and there it is exposed uh, you know no big surprises now notice on the uh, uh, nut on this uh, center shaft how I tacked it in three spots and no threads are showing up top and uh, that's a good thing because that allows more of the shaft and the keyway to be on the uh, non-threaded portion and uh, you know if you had uh, set that uh, uh, shaft uh, uh, with threads up top here it would be removing them reducing them down below here and then the uh, pulley with the uh, the key in it and, and I weld these uh, uh, keys I just put a, a little uh, uh, TIG weld uh, spot uh, there and there to hold it in place so they don't uh, move you've got the utmost amount of keyway uh, in the uh, pulley and, and on the shaft but the the point is is to have as much of that key on the non-threaded portion of the shaft and that's the way i know how to do it you just tack that nut down here that keeps it in place it doesn't wander up and down when you're tightening uh, both ends and then uh, you ensure that there's the utmost uh, uh, unthreaded uh, shaft. And in the literature, it calls for a, uh, a washer spacer, a, a small one right at the end. I, I don't use that either. And you can see that I've uh, kind of chamfered this uh, 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 pulley at the end so it doesn't uh, impinge on the uh, bearing at all. It just uh, uh, seats up to the uh, inner race portion. So you know that's not a problem uh, with it uh, just being right up to the bearing because it's impinging only on the inner race that's where you want it if it impinged over here then it uh, it could uh, cause problems with the bearing but uh, again I just like to have as much as of that uh, unthreaded shaft keyway uh, surface for the pulley Okay, and this space is important to note also because this uh, spacer, this spacer, and the sleeve that uh, the cone represents in, in length has to be an exact fit. I mean, if it's got a little bit of gap when you press this bearing uh, in and then you tighten it down, it's going to try to take up that space. And again, I'll use that word impinge. The, the forces on the inner race of the bearing will impinge uh, on the bearings, the outer race, and uh, it'll cause the bearing to fail. So uh, the, the inner race needs to snug up. And as I can see right here, this, is, this has got, you know, the tolerance is real close. But uh, interestingly, uh, this is not the, uh, uh, the actual uh, factory uh, uh, spacer here. This is, but this one here isn't. This is the actual one. What I did was I uh, cut one uh, from some stock I had and uh, I added a, a millimeter or so because uh, on uh, this, this cone and the uh, other cone, when I uh, cut them loose of the old shaft, I, I cut the uh, uh, shaft off uh, right between the nut and the uh, cone just so they wouldn't have to travel down that extra length and that that shortened that uh, inner race on this uh, uh, cone as well as this cone but it didn't matter up top because this sat up top but inside here since I took off some here I had to make up for it with that uh, uh, a new spacer that was uh, uh, you know make up the difference and 
I, I believe I came pretty close and uh, the bearing wasn't impinged upon when I uh, tightened it down. So, you know, this is what uh, you'll want. You'll want a tight fit in here, even without any uh, tension on the uh, uh, nuts of the shaft. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you've got uh, your bearings already pressed in and then you shoehorn uh, these uh, items in, you've probably done something wrong. These, you know, when you put in the shaft, you can start to uh, slip these on, but you will uh, undoubtedly want to press in uh, the bearing uh, all the way, or, you know, it can be set out a little bit and then just tap it in the rest of the way. E either side, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't recall what the literature says, uh, if they actually say, yeah, you got to press in the bearing uh, at the end. Don't press it in. I, I think it even says, yeah, go ahead and press the, the bearings in and then put uh, the shaft and everything else. But believe me, that's not a good idea. It's better to uh, 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 press in one at least the, the rest of the way. And uh, so what I'm going to do on this one, because I noticed, uh, see, this is the old uh, cone. This is the upper one. This is good. This had uh, I shaved off the, a little up top, but uh, on the underside, you see that lip there. And that's why, uh, you know, I mentioned before, this one has more skirting because that lip isn't there. They, they filled that in with skirting. And guess what? You know, when you uh, put the shaft down through there, uh, through the uh, uh, sleeve of the cone, and this sits, sits up on top of that uh, bearing, Guess what? I'll use that word again. Impinges. The cone material itself impinges on the bearing, not just the inner race where uh, it would uh, on the old one. See? The inner race sets up on the bearing and doesn't impinge on the rest of the bearing. So that was a good thing. This is not so good in that fashion. So I'm going to put a little shim between these two. And actually, it's going to be on this side. This will sit up top, but for illustration purposes, uh, you'll want to do that. You'll want to make sure that uh, it doesn't uh, uh, impinge on the bearing. And so they're a little shim. I've, I've got some. I'll show you when I, I do it. Uh, uh, but in, on the inner one, it, it won't matter because uh, this uh, uh, side just, you know, butts up to the uh, spacer. So no problem there. It's not against a bearing. Up top, there's... Uh, space so it's not going to impinge on the underside of anything down here okay and here we go we're just going to take uh, the one nut off and these nuts back here just acting as washers and I'm using the larger part of the uh, uh, socket uh, to press on that bearing so it's not just pressing on the outer races it's uh, doing both on the inner and outer so you slide that baby in there, put all those uh, washers, you just take up the slack, and this uh, hole saw, it just acts like a cup, you could use something else, uh, I suppose you might even have a, a socket head big enough to do it, but uh, I don't think I did. Okay, so it starts to cinch up. You make sure you're centered. And I've got half inch uh, nuts going on this thing. So I'm just going to press the bearing out this way. I can hear it already starting to move, so it's not putting too much tension on those bearings and races and things. Now, if you're just putting uh, the uh, the cone on, you didn't have to actually take the bearing all the way out. Just back it off for a few millimeters would have probably done it. But uh, I'm going to do something else while I'm here just to demonstrate it. And uh, it may be a benefit for many. For you old pros, if you're even bothering to watch something like this. Uh, let me see. Do I got it? Yeah, there it is. Ah, let's put this thing back together. 
but there it is the bearing out I'm gonna leave the other one uh, where it is there's no need to take it out but if you'll notice that uh, bearing has that orange uh, seal and that orange seal usually indicates that that uh, bearing is from Japan and uh, that's a good thing and uh, these uh, uh, darker uh, sealed ones uh, are usually uh, China bearings and that's not a bad thing uh, I believe the quality approaches the same as the uh, uh, Japanese but there is one criticism of these uh, Chinese bearings that's uh, often made and that is that they're uh, uh, not very well packed with grease and the, the quality of grease may be uh, 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 not that good and uh, I've uh, plucked up out a, a few of these uh, seals and uh, I do notice that the uh, uh, the grease is uh, pretty pretty minimal and it's an odd color grease too it's a, a transparent stuff and uh, I don't like it so uh, whenever I get these bearings uh, I do pluck out the seal we'll do that I've already repacked this with some red uh, Lucas uh, tacky uh, stuff that uh, I like well enough and, uh, this is what I'm going to use for uh, a tool to pluck out that uh, seal it's uh, you know on my pocket knife it's a kind of a, a pointed pick tool it's nothing sharp but uh, it, you know it has that jabbing action and it's thin so, but you may have a uh, uh, thin bladed uh, uh, flathead screwdriver that works as well. So, uh, I don't know if I can capture it while I'm doing it, but uh, I'm just going to go in and go for it. Then I'll show you the result. Okay, there. See? It kind of makes a little potato chip wave uh, if you do it well enough, and uh, that's well enough to, uh, you know, pluck. I went to the outside and plucked it up, and, you know, you, you can flatten it back down, and it, uh, it will uh, seal well again and look uh, well. But there's a, a well-packed bearing. This is not how they look, uh, you know, when you buy them, but uh, make sure you... Uh, do that if you're going to get the Chinese ones. They're priced well, they're, the quality is good, but they're just not uh, well uh, packed with grease. So, you know, pluck out the seal, straighten it back up. It's easy. There's some metal in there. Yeah, see, it's, it's metal and uh, some kind of vinyl or something. And uh, they straighten up well. You can put it on a flat surface and tap it down if need be, but. Uh, just by feel, I'm, I'm feeling it's getting flat enough. Maybe not. Yeah, I'm going to use the uh, handle of the knife to kind of smooth it out a little. Okay, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. And let's see if you can see how easy it is just to snap that seal back in and that's about it you know not bad so it's uh it's easy to unseal and then reseal these these babies so you know don't be afraid to do it uh and uh, but do it noticing between these two cones this one is real flush that uh, inner sleeve uh, is very flush this one sets up a little bit and i think uh I can uh, uh, use this one up, up top here and not have to uh, uh, put a little shim uh, on top of there. I don't think it will impinge on the bearing. This one, this one would. This one fits so flush it would uh, uh, touch onto the, the seal there and everything. This one, not so much. So I'll put it up there and uh, we'll, we'll double check that. And sure enough, uh, no impinging. I'm just uh, finding so many... Uh, opportunities to use that word impinging it's not and uh, so I'm not going to put a, a, a little shim uh, spacer there I'm just going to leave it uh, but I'll mention also that uh, you know if you really wanted to uh, uh, add some uh, threads down below uh, you could uh, you know grind off some on uh, of this uh, inner sleeve uh, race right here you know those are needless this uh all the threads here uh, you could 
push down more threads uh, by shaving off some up top here. I'm not going to do that. I mean, uh, if I use the one that did uh, need to uh, uh, have a shim added, that would, you know, raise it up a little bit. And I would be inclined to compensate for that by shaving some off at the top. But, uh, eh, I don't need that many threads. I've done other things to uh, compensate for that. But, uh, if I wanted to gain a, a thread or two from uh, shaving them off up top here, I'd be very careful in how I did it. Uh, I'd use the uh, grinder, a, a coarse uh, grinding wheel at first to cut uh, fast and keep the heat down. You, you don't want to, you know, lay on the grinder and, and heat up this material uh, needlessly. I mean, they get heat uh, enough just by uh, the disc cups uh, spinning on them, so they can tolerate some heat, but. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. You get concentrated heat from a, a grinder and it, it could uh, cause some, some weak spots in this material. And uh, also you want to make sure you don't uh, introduce any chemicals here like, uh, you know, oils or greases and stuff. And, you know, I, I'm going to be using, uh, uh, as I have uh, already, uh, on the shaft uh, before I put it all together, some of this uh, anti seize uh, copper stuff. Uh, I like this uh, one. It's easy to use. You don't spray it. You don't slather it on with those little uh, brushes. You can just dab it on right there in the tube and uh, it's a clean, clean way to apply it. So this will uh, uh, go on at the last minute. God, I happen to have some of the, this key stock and this is how much, you know, it's almost twice as long. Uh, to, to fill up that uh, full space there. So I'm going to do it. I've got uh, the key stock. I'm just going to do it uh, and make it uh, extra stout. Not that I think uh, this would ever fail inside here. I, I, I'm sure it wouldn't, but uh, I'm just going to cut this uh, since I've got it. Okay, and here's that lower uh, spacer. Uh, just before I uh, uh, press in that uh, bearing, you can see that... Uh, you know, the seat for the bearing and that uh, spacer, they look about the same. And uh, But you never know until you tighten that nut down below if it's going to cause stress on the bearing, if it's uh, close enough. And uh, I'm guessing that it is because it's the uh, factory. But uh, if not, I can just uh, drop this one in, in its place, and it'll give uh, 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 a little better fit that way. And here I go uh, getting ready to press in the bearing and I'm not literally pressing it in. I could do it with the nut and this spacer doesn't really go here. I'm just using it to protect the threads uh, while I'm using the hammer. I'm going to use the hammer and uh, just tap it around the outer race and that way it won't uh, transmit the stress uh, from the inner race through the bearings. The, outer race uh, will seat in there. It takes no stress when you tap on it, but uh, gently. Okay, and there they are, installed. And uh, no apparent impingement. The uh, bearings are running uh, uh, pretty nicely. I mean, it's not uh, as fast as I might thought, but uh, those bearings are, pre are packed pretty uh, fully, so uh, I think that's uh, good. I think that's quite good. And yeah, no added uh, uh, shim washers needed, no uh, uh, other, uh, you know, non-spec uh, OEM uh, spacers. Everything's uh, unchanged. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, good. And uh, again, this, uh, these uh, newer cones have, uh, you know, more skirting. There's, uh, you know, probably a, a quarter inch more. So... So well, maybe this will be a, a, a little more stout when it comes to having that problem that I had. It, uh, it might not happen uh, with these. The one side of the uh, disc cup uh, going on, uh, it's pretty straightforward. The uh, threaded rod, uh, you can uh, grab a hold of this uh, lock nut and it'll thread it without uh, losing its place. And, and then you can get the jam nut uh, tight. Once it's uh, you know seated down underneath here flush, and you got the jam nut tight, then you can start to uh, uh, adjust these and, and the rest of the rod won't move. Uh, otherwise, uh, the roller plate here, uh, you may notice that uh, yours is uh, worn in a spot over time. So uh, 
you know, fl flip it over, use the other side, or if, if uh, there's one area that's uh, uh, divoted out, you know, flip it upside down, then it'll hit down lower. So that's what I'm doing. I'm using the upper side of this uh, other side. So it'll go on there, and touch this little roller guide. We'll uh, set the feeler in there and do all that stuff. Otherwise, uh, these uh, pivot joints, that's a, a bushing in there. They can uh, fall out, drop out, uh, and you can uh, lose them, and that would be a, a problem. Uh, it's just a round little cup thing. And, and let's go online uh, briefly and uh, check some of these uh, sources for uh, Dixon parts. There's a few things I, I'm going to show you. Here is my start page, but this is a, a good source right here. And uh, do they have the... Uh, no, th this isn't the one with the free uh, the free uh, uh, install procedure. Yeah, this one here, this uh, Lawn Mower Pros, uh, they have, uh, you know, stuff you can download that'll uh, get you going. Let me see, uh, drive cone replacement. That's what we're talking about. And you can see it. Uh, it's right there. It's not the same... Uh, uh, exact uh, literature that that I have but uh, I believe the text reads about the same so you know you can't go wrong with this uh, I wish I knew where I got uh, uh, my old uh, literature but uh, here is a source it's free uh, you'll have to download in uh, segments so you know do it I'm not gonna really go into uh, you know all the exact uh, uh, bench adjustments, uh, but have the literature. If you've got some skin in the game, if you've got one of these uh, mowers, uh, you know, you've uh, gotten the feeler gauge. You've gotten the uh, uh, a hard copy of the uh, literature that shows you how to do all these bench adjustments, and uh, or you've at least downloaded the uh, digital copy of those. They're free, and so, you know, don't just take my word for it, you know, walking you through all those steps. I'm not going to do it anyway, but uh, I'll just touch on uh, some of them after I've gotten this all together, the feeler points and the, the gauge measurements. But, uh, yeah, it's going well. Uh, another thing on these disc cups, uh, I don't believe it matters uh, which side goes to which side. It, you know, they obverse, they flip the same. Uh, the only difference uh, might be that if you're if you do end up flipping them accidentally or by on purpose, uh, the uh, uh, spacer on these uh, little sprockets uh, may not line up as well on the little uh, jack shaft uh, chain assembly here. So uh, you know it doesn't matter because you know when you're after you're doing all these adjustments, you're going to check that chain line, or at least I'm going to check it. Uh, uh, every time I do these and you know you can put washer shims in here to uh, make it line up better it's usually a, a minor uh, point but uh, uh, it's it's one of the the finer things to uh, uh, pick up on and here's a torque rod uh, you can see I'm running down uh, uh, a die over it and I'm tapping out uh, the uh, sleeve that it runs up into that's threaded and uh, that takes a quarter inch uh, tap and uh, I'm putting a die on this uh, half inch thread at the top uh, it's good to keep all of these uh, uh, clean and free and uh, uh, because uh, when they bind up uh, you know you won't have uh, as good a success in your uh, finer adjustments not installed of course but I just want you to see how you know the action works when you have the two uh, uh, nuts uh, uh, locked together they will rotate and and the whole uh, segment will rise and lower but uh, if these if you break these uh, nuts apart then you'll just be uh, compressing the spring uh, the bushing so uh, you know when you're gonna attempt to make those adjustments that the uh, literature calls for you know, they say, uh, you know, uh, counterclockwise on the uh, left side to speed it up, or if you want to slow it down, you uh, uh, do it clockwise. But uh, first, you got to break uh, this top nut here to allow it, uh, well, going down, I guess you wouldn't have to, but 
going up, you do, because this acts as a stopper. There's no stopper down below here. Maybe I will uh, uh, talk a little bit about the bench adjustment. Not uh, uh, terribly in-depth or step-by-step -step necessarily, because you really need the literature. You shouldn't take my advice or anybody else's. You should uh, have the literature from the factory. That's how we're all getting this. You know, we're not, uh, at least I'm not, uh, I'm not coming up with this, uh, you know, just uh, from my uh, intuitiveness. Not at all. I'm following this. And any added little uh, uh, pointers, uh, I'll be happy to pass along. But this is it. This uh, uh, can't be replaced uh, uh, by a video. You need the, the literature. So get some skin in the game. Uh, get a, a copy of this or download it. Uh, have it handy. And, uh, but uh, so I will. I'll just touch on uh, the initial uh, uh, major adjustment, and that is moving the disc cup in. And uh, at this point, you need this gauge. And uh, in other uh, steps, you're going to need this gauge also. I happen to have two of them. You don't need two. This one's uh, homemade, but uh, this one was a factory one. And uh, uh, so you uh, set it up right here. And you can see in the back the... Uh, uh, the uh, spring uh, bushings are not uh, uh, used right at this moment. And uh, there's three points for moving the disc cup in. They have the same thread, so they move together. Whatever you do in rotation to these two, do to this as well. And so initially, you just get the, uh, the right angle here, or the perpendicular uh, uh, check here. And that looks good uh, to the back uh, of this. And it's square in there. Also the roller plate you make sure that is at a right angle to the base. And it is. And once you start to get those moving uh, at the uh, right uh, uh, angles then you go in for the actual adjustment. And I'll, uh, I'll prop up the camera here and show you that. Okay, so additionally, you do not have this uh, gap set here. These uh, threads should be showing uh, about uh, this much uh, later in the adjustments. But initially, they say in the literature to uh, bring this nut uh, down and uh, just use the uh, gauge as the height adjustment up front here. Because this will be the center line. This will come... Uh, into play uh, with the uh, uh, spring bushings uh, uh, in the back for the torque rod. But initially, no, this, uh, this is where it, uh, it's set in the center line. From here to here, that's all going to come together later. But uh, after you've got the disc cup uh, 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 pulled uh, close enough, you're going to want to uh, take out some gauges and the uh, the spec is for 50 thousandths uh, on that roller in there, and I don't have a 50 thousandths feeler. I've got uh, a 15 and a 35, so I'm just going to use them together. And, uh, you know, don't uh, think that this is the adjustment, that, that gap there. It's not. They ask that you do squeeze them together and then slide in behind there for the roller. And I've just done that, and it's fine. If, if you need to, you could probably drop this out of the way. It probably isn't going to matter, you know, exactly on the center line. But either way, I'm, uh, I'm happy with that adjustment there. But I'll get it back right on that center line. And that's that. And uh, then you'll be able to see, you know, how much bushing tension is here, how many threads are showing, just for a, a visual guide. And then also up top here... This is always uh, something I look for, and it, it usually comes out about there. Uh, later, you'll be able to use that as a visual guide if things have changed and moved. And uh, uh, ideally, you won't have any touching at this point. The, the cones uh, won't be touching the cups. And I can hear just a little bit of drag, just but not enough to actually turn it. So I'm liking it. So that's the uh, initial adjustment. And once you have that adjustment uh, on the bench, ideally, you're never going to want to uh, uh, start playing with that uh, much uh, later. So 
you know, you can lock this jam nut then and, uh, you know, be, be pretty confident that that uh, measurement won't change uh, much. I mean, after a few years, maybe this uh, cone will wear down some and then you'll want to inch it in, uh, you know, a half a millimeter just slightly and, and double check that. And you can do that uh, in the unit. It doesn't have to be on the bench. You can get at these. Okay, and these uh, spring rods are uh, centered in the, that hole there so they won't uh, chafe on there uh, as these uh, uh, cradles go up and down. Uh, no problem. On uh, close inspection, I noticed that these bushings, uh, you know, have a, 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 a seemingly proper amount of uh, tension on them. This one seems, uh, you know, puckered up a little bit, but uh, not bad. Uh, this one's uh, puckered up nicely, too. And uh, down below on this one, it's uh, puckered up and uh, in there uh, pretty stiff. I can actually get a little bit of rotation on that one now that I, I play with it. But on this one especially... This one's loose. All the uh, adjustments are proper, and uh, I got 50, 50 thousandths uh, measured on this side as well. But uh, these bushings are just uh, looser. These things are almost 25 years old, and on the one side, uh, the uh, tension is uh, a good, quite good. But this side seems a little, uh, a little sloppy, so I'm going to put a washer behind this one for sure maybe even down below here, just to pucker that up uh, a little better. Not that that's, uh, you know, if I left it this way, it might be fine because the, the tension is more outward. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not going to have a problem going back a little, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, after the uh, disc cup adjustment, uh, is all uh, squared away. It says to remove the gauge from uh, up front there and uh, uh, set your uh, uh, torque bushing uh, springs by uh, rotating that uh, bottom portion up until it seats tightly. And uh, I'm going to say tightly means where, you know, you can get a little movement under there, maybe not much. But uh, that's pretty tight, in my opinion. It's, it's really not a, a measurable uh, thing, you know, tightly. But uh, it's seated up there. Your jam nuts are uh, loose. And we're going for then the, uh, the preload adjustment. And that means uh, holding it below and coming down on the uh, lower jam nut until... On this particular unit, this is the, uh, the 1990s version. It has uh, both the rubber bushings, and on the newer one, they reintroduced uh, these uh, 3304 and similar models with uh, uh, cuff. There's metal cuff uh, uh, rubber bushings, and uh, on this one, since it touches the uh, top, the top one is cuff, and then on the other side, since the uh, disc uh, touches up below, that's the cuff bushing, but on these models, they're the same, and uh, it can all be uh, the measurement gotten on this one gauge. Now, for the newer ones, there's one separate gauge just for this preload adjustment, and, you know, you might uh, want to get that. If not, uh, you might be able to just ask somebody, what is that measurement, and uh, we can just do it measuring. Now, see, I've got it. That's more more than this calls for, but you know what? I'm gonna leave this uh, a little more snug down than this uh, gauge uh, says because, uh, you know, these bushings are older and they might have lost some of their uh, uh, strength, so it's just slightly more than this gauge calls for, but uh, then I'm gonna scoot this down Okay, here's the preload. Uh, they look good. Uh, these two uh, jam nuts uh, lined up uh, beautifully well uh, when they cinch down together. I might uh, take this top uh, uh, jam nut off and uh, put it on the little belt uh, sander and uh, see if I can uh, shave off uh, one side so that uh, these two come together just like this. Then I'll always know, you know, I can visually see that they're still uh, jam tight. And whichever way, way I go, 
up or down, you know, the wrench, it, it won't care. It'll grab onto both of them from above. So uh, I might do that to this one. Just uh, just put a little, little touch to it. Okay, uh, centering the disc cups on the cones. Uh, as you can see, uh, all of the uh, adjustments so far have been done, but it hangs up. And uh, you just uh, uh, put the alignment tool back here, and uh, then you have to adjust the, uh, the torque rod bushing. So it's hanging up, not too much. I'm turning over here clockwise, counterclockwise, uh, if that's what it, it takes. But uh, I think uh, clockwise for me is working. Yeah, maybe not. Let's go counterclockwise. Yeah, that's doing it. Counterclockwise. Starting to slip. Yeah. Slipping. Let's see how far I gotta go before it starts catching the other way. There. There's fully disengaged. I'll keep going back, back. See where it picks up. Okay, yeah, it's picking up. So I'm going to split the difference. Let's see, down, 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 down. Okay, back, back, back. All right. There's one side neutralized and level. And as you can see, we still haven't done this uh, uh, spring tension down here. This uh, jam nut is still down. That's what we're leading up to. Neither one of these are doing their thing yet. But yeah. Okay, we're getting closer to uh, finishing this bench adjustment. And uh, this is the neutral adjustment. The neutral rod with these neutral springs are here. And you still have your gauge attached. But uh, you take your 9 16 and you uh, drive this nut up until you get this gap right here on this gauge. And uh, that'll cause this uh, to start uh, riding up a little. It's not uh, uh, quite flush with the uh, uh, bench here. So uh, the neutral part comes in and you just drive this other nut down, this other spring down to where it does sit uh, flush uh, so that's that's it that's neutral you know you just bring this one up and uh, give it that gap and then you'll uh, have this ride up and then you just drop this down until uh, that doesn't ride up anymore easy peasy okay and sure enough driven down flush down below here maybe you could take another turn but yeah I'm liking that we still have uh, no touchy and this uh, gap here it's uh, seeming like 50 thousandths okay there it is all buttoned up the uh, torque rods uh, are in their uh, uh, proper place as well as the uh, neutral springs the disc uh, cups uh, are all set and uh, that 50 thousandths tolerance uh, still holds true you can see visually that the cones align with the cup real well both of them don't touch uh, when spinning, and even though the uh, the right side cup, when going forward, touches underneath on the bottom cone, and the uh, left cup uh, touches on the top of the right cone, they still have their symmetry, and they they look uh, uh, pretty close to perfectly spaced, even though you know they're they're touching on opposite uh, uh, sides. Uh, so that's always a good sign to me. Okay, so I'm getting ready to put this baby in, but before I do, uh, I'll mention that, uh, you know, if you're putting in new cones, uh, uh, the shaft, uh, the center shaft, it's important to uh, pay attention to the threads down below here, because like I said, that keyway, you know, if you're on uh, mostly the threaded part, uh, you know, it can uh, chew up that uh, area and uh, you'll, you'll have trouble. And... Uh, uh, it's easy to overcome that, I believe, uh, by uh, just making sure you got the uh, nut uh, uh, riding down uh, on that uh, threaded part. Uh, 
I tack it up top here and so uh, that's a good thing but uh, also you can take out that spacer there but uh, you know chamfer uh, bevel that uh, edge of the pulley uh, so it doesn't impinge upon the bearing and that'll uh, get you another uh, thread or two otherwise uh, you know if you really wanted to get OCD about it you could uh, grind off uh, this uh, metal that rides up uh, over the cone uh, uh, as a part of the spacer there that if that was ground down you could uh, drop the shaft even further and get uh, more on that uh, unthreaded uh, portion and uh, get a different pulley as well you know th this pulley has more uh, height than some of the others so that means there's more keyway and uh, even if it's grabbing onto uh, threaded and unthreaded portions more is better so you know that's what I did I don't know how much I picked up on here but but at least a quarter of an inch oh uh, was there any other point uh, that could be picked up? Well, yeah, I, uh, I tacked in the, uh, uh, the key on the pulley itself just to, uh, you know, have it uh, as stout as possible. But, uh, yeah, this all was prompted, uh, you know, a couple of months ago when I put uh, the new shaft in because, uh, you know, it was chewing up and, you know, it was the beginning of the season. And, uh, you know, I, I was getting some wobble down here. I, I forget, uh, I think it was just noise at first, and I felt around, and oh, yeah, that, uh, that baby's getting chewed up. So I took the spacer out of there. You know, it set up a few millimeters is all. It wasn't really a washer. It was a spacer, just so it doesn't impinge upon the bearing. But uh, like I said, you can overcome that, take it out uh, with a little beveling on these uh, uh, pulleys here. And uh, so when I took that out, I was able uh, to get up on the shaft a little more, put another turn or two uh, on the uh, nut down below, and that held this pulley in place for, you know, uh, another uh, couple of months and uh, until it finally just uh, gave out. So it's important, you know, the shaft, whenever you're dealing with the, these cones, the shaft is... Uh, uh, a key it's uh, really key to making it uh, a lasting uh, repair I believe and uh, I uh, wrote down uh, what the dimensions of the shaft are it's a uh, ten and three quarters long 5 8 shaft the uh, key uh, uh, groove in it is the uh, 316 square and uh, you know as these dicks and parts get harder to find uh, and I believe this uh, shaft is a little hard to find right now so uh, you know, I don't have a, a, a lathe or a mill to, to make up uh, these things uh, myself. Uh, uh, but, you know, you can get the 5 8 keyed shaft stock and just cut it and uh, put you on some threads with the, uh, with the die. And uh, I don't know what the threads are. It's, uh, this is 5 8 It might be half inch. Uh, uh, I don't know. Half inch, yeah or uh, could go down to 16th, but whatever the thread is, it's uh, easy. But here it's uh, 1 and 3 8 uh, uh, length of thread on each end. And, you know, you could stop short of that uh, 1 and 3 8 to, you know, have more of the shaft uh, showing without the threads. And, uh, you know, that would uh, uh, be, you know, a custom solution. wouldn't cost much, and it's doable for... You know, guys like me uh, that uh, don't have uh, a lot of shop equipment, you know, we just got uh, a little garage or something like this. And, uh, but there's a lot you can do with, uh, you know, a, a little uh, a number of tools. And so that's just one uh, solution I'm keeping in mind uh, for the future. I, I plan to keep this Dixon mower for a while, but, uh, you know, they're... They're angling towards obsolescence, and, uh, you know, the day may come when, you know, they're just difficult to uh, get parts for, but uh, for the moment, uh, there's uh, cones uh, available, and uh, I think those will be, you know, around for a long time. So uh, the other stuff that goes along with the, the cones, like the uh, shafts, uh, you know, you can still do them, I'm, I'm quite confident. Okay, and one last look before it goes in, you can see the... Uh, Distance uh, feels like the 50,000s is still uh, preserved, and uh, 
you can see that they uh, both of the disc cups run free and how, how close the tolerance is when you just click up some tension underneath and click down as well you know it's right in between those two points same on the other side here pull up push down you know it's right in between and, and you can uh, kind of hear the it hitting the uh, cone each each direction so you know it's it's just ready to to touch down and uh, what else might we do we can squeeze it and but yeah looks good looks even uh, the heights on these uh, threads uh, uh, appear different but you know that's okay uh, because uh, the feel is the same uh, back uh, on these uh, torque rods uh, uh, some years ago I uh, made these out of uh, stainless steel and apparently I didn't make them exactly the same height because one seems to show more threads than the other but again that that just might be its own uh, peculiar adjustment per side to get it to be uh, symmetrical and uh, you know these uh, tolerances here look uh, uh, to be uh, real close and touch down on at the top seems to be the same so yeah I'm liking it uh, so that's what uh, I think you'll uh, want to uh, uh, have when uh, you've got it ready to going back in just up and down you know top top just but yet it still uh, goes free everything looks good here those uh, 50 thousands in there yeah, all right. Otherwise, uh, Dixon parts, you know, here they are. Uh, that other site really, I think, has more. But uh, uh, the uh, center shaft, I believe, is no longer available. But that could change. You know, they might just decide to buy uh, some uh, some of that shaft, key uh, shaft stock, and, uh, you know, have somebody uh, thread the ends. And uh, then they'll have, you know, 100 shafts in in stock immediately otherwise uh, you know I always like to buy online out of state I'm you know I'm a Christian anarchist I'm a, a stateless person so you know it's it's uh, almost a duty to me to uh, you know seek ways to uh, uh, keep uh, you know money out of the the state's hands and make the world a better place in that way and uh, you know they uh, they don't do anything for that. They're a, a parasitic class. They're extortion paid. So uh, yeah, go online, buy out of state. Uh, oftentimes this stuff is uh, 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 free shipping and uh, no tax paid. And you'll also be uh, uh, unburdening these uh, uh, business people from you know being a, a coerced, unpaid uh, tax collector for the state. Uh, bureaucrats and that extortion racket it's it's a criminal enterprise you know no surprise if so that's you know the snowflake alert if uh, anybody is getting triggered by this you know go seek a safe space but uh, yeah that's that's my little uh, matter of conscience I'll mention but uh, another one oh let's see uh, I was talking about that preload adjustment and I've uh, got this page already uh, pointing uh, to uh, how the uh, variations of uh, rubber uh, spring uh, assemblies have changed and you know this is uh, uh, not mine uh, right there I I'm actually the 95 but you'll notice how many changes these uh, torque uh, rod spring bushing uh, assemblies have have gone through there you know here you'll see, you know, eight washers, uh, four on each, you know. But uh, here's uh, my uh, unit, the, the 95 through 98, and they've only got the washers on the top and the bottom, not in between the forks there. And then it's uh, eight washers again. And here, this is an odd one. You notice how they have the uh, metal cups uh, on the... Uh, uh, left side only and not down below here you know three washers and, and 
two cups. So one, two, three, and then you got the two cups there. But then later they uh, go on to uh, put the two cups on the uh, upper left and then the lower right. That is the disc cup touches down from underneath on this side and uh, on the left side it's on top. So you know that follows. Uh, but uh, it's just uh, interesting how they've, they've changed uh, this uh, uh, bushing. Okay, now with the uh, unit in, we want those uh, cradles to retain their uh, neutral position. That is, the uh, disc cups not to touch up or down. You can hear that tapping up or down. And uh, since we've uh, connected the, uh, the ball joint coupling uh, tie rod ends, uh, that uh, transmits uh, whatever weight is on these levers. And uh, we can see that uh, it is not neutral. There is a, a slot right in there. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, see it's, it's forward. And we, we want that to drop into the center. That will give us the neutral. And to do that, uh, we rotate these, uh, these tie rod ends. And there's one. But now, you see, that nut right there, uh, Dixon uh, recommends that you leave that loose, or looser than I like them, so that whenever you uh, uh, have no tension on the levers, they will immediately drop into that uh, slot in the neutral position as a safety feature. And uh, I don't like that. Uh, I'll run these two levers with uh, one, uh, my left arm, uh, I'll use my hand and left forearm uh, to run both levers together while I'll hang uh, uh, a cordless uh, string trimmer uh, with my right hand uh, going along uh, edge lines and stuff. So I don't want these dropping out every time I lose momentary contact uh, with my forearm. I want it to be there, you know, if I let up and, you know, do stuff like that. So I leave these uh, snug uh, fit, but uh, for the adjustment, I'm going to loosen them up so that when we uh, turn those uh, uh, couplers on that tie rod end uh, for the steering, that uh, when it hits that slot, uh, it'll just fall right into it because when it's not in the slot, it hangs up. But uh, when it does uh, get to the, the neutral position, these levers will drop down if this is uh, loosened up. So uh, I'll get to doing that here and uh, see if we can get that to, to drop right in the slot. Right now, it's hanging just a little on the cones, not much. But uh, adjusting that coupler, we're going to start churning. We've got the jam out in there. Boom. The handle just fell to that neutral spot. Let's see what the cones look like. Yep, still free. Little, little touch down, not much. I think I'm happy with that. Maybe another turn will help. No, it doesn't. I'm going to back up just a hair. Yeah, back up just a hair again. I'm going to live with that. I like it. So that's the neutral uh, position for the cones and the uh, levers as well. Later, uh, this uh, nut right here will uh, adjust these levers uh, at the ends so that they match up, but uh, they'll still be neutral with the, just a little turning to match up the, uh, the ends of the, the levers. Okay, so this is about how I like the levers adjusted, uh, even at the points, the throw, the stops uh, uh, hit at the same uh, ending point. Um, they're able to be uh, uh, pulled down easily enough, but they, they stay up. And uh, that's what I like. Also, the, uh, the cups uh, uh, are still uh, staying pretty free. They're touching down a little bit, but uh, it's, it's very slight, you know, the, the weight of these levers can touch down. And these cones are so new that uh, uh, they're probably going to break in and, and then they'll be just perfect. But uh, the initial uh, touchdown is so slight that, uh, see, I'm not even 
I'm not even minding, but you just wiggle the handle a little bit, and then they're free again. So, I, you know, that's that's as good as I know how to get it. Uh, and the uh, adjustment too on the levers, I'm liking it. All the planets uh, are in their proverbial alignment. Now, I haven't done any of the uh, uh, parking brake uh, rod assembly. I did that on that uh, first uh, video I did uh, rebuilding this uh, uh, initially five or more years ago and you know uh, I'm not going to go into that on this video. This uh, I don't know what this video was. Uh, it's just uh, changing the cones you know not necessarily an in-depth step-by-step rebuild but uh, you know the cones and uh, a little focus on that uh, center shaft because uh, that's a, a, a real key importance uh, in my mind that I've learned uh, over the years. I'm no no expert. I'm not a mechanic, not an engineer. I've done a, quite a bit of welding, of course, and, and fabrication, but, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of tools. I, I'm no machinist. I, I don't know, know how to run a, a lathe or a mill, even if I had one, but... Uh, it's easy to do this stuff and that's why I like this mower because uh, you know it's not that difficult it's it's kind of tedious there's a, a lot of steps to this this kind of uh, 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 you know a friction drive and, and it's pretty much obsolete now with all the uh, hydraulic units being so s stupid simple you just change out a uh, a pump a reservoir a, a, a wheel motor and uh, put the lines on and you know that's it's an elegant solution you know it's a little more costly undoubtedly but uh, I still like this uh, Dixon because uh, you know it's it's lighter weight it's it's a small unit it's easy to just push around I uh, I still think there's a, a place for it and uh, for me there is uh, certainly but uh, for others too and uh, like I've mentioned in the past uh, they're easy to come across uh, uh, inexpensively so you know, it's a, it's just like a little cult motor uh, mower in my uh, uh, opinion. So I'm still digging it. Sure enough, the uh, chain line on this uh, sprocket uh, isn't really that good here. These chains are are sloppy. They're not real uh, uh, tight uh, to begin with, and rightly so. But uh, still, you want that uh, alignment uh, well. And it looks like uh, this one sets back too much. And you can see there's a uh, Two, uh, two washers in there so this will be an easy uh, task of just removing one of those there's a, a thick one and a thin one and I think probably uh, I'm not sure which which one would be better to take out I'll try the thick one uh, first and put it back in there and of course uh, to take uh, take this nut off uh, you have to secure the cup but do it in such a way I've got this uh, uh, wrench and uh, going through here and it, it hangs up on the cradle uh, arm up there it doesn't uh, touch on any of these cups because you wouldn't want to wrench on there and have this uh, arm uh, impinge on the cones because uh, they could break off that material so be very careful when you do that or come up with some other way to, to do it I've, I've never had a problem this way of just uh, locking it in and then uh, uh, releasing the nut that way. A okay, quick overview on the uh, parking brake assembly and rod. Uh, this is the kind of action you want. You want it to flop forward when it's not engaged, but then you want it when it breaks over center there, you want it to lock in place pretty good. And uh, sometimes you can lose that. You can find uh, it slipping off of park pretty easily and uh, it's usually because uh, there's just not enough turns on that uh, adjusting nut uh, on each side. And, uh, you know, don't be afraid to cinch it down a little tighter. Because, uh, you know, two turns can make all the difference of it uh, holding in park and not holding in park. And you'll see that when it's disengaged, you'll still have some slop. Don't worry about this hanging up here. As long as it's uh, loose, not engaged, then when it breaks over center it stays in place and it will uh, also hold this uh, uh, button uh, down that's about the only uh, safety switch I have left on this I've removed the seat switch and uh, 
oh down on the deck as well they just uh, were needless and eh, just more maintenance but I've left this one uh, for some reason I don't know why it's just still there uh, otherwise, uh, also, uh, you'll notice down in the corner there is that uh, uh, idler for the uh, drive. Now that uh, idler pulley, uh, while the uh, parking brake is engaged, uh, it removes the tension on the drive belt. And uh, let me see if I can zip zoom. And uh, as you disengage it, it uh, allows that. But uh, one point on that... There's a little pulley looking thing there. Uh, I uh, replaced that cable there because it started fraying and uh, you can see I've got it lubed up pretty good now but uh, what I noticed uh, uh, at that time was that uh, that uh, lock nut there was uh, tight and uh, it didn't allow that little pulley to turn so that undoubtedly caused uh, more chafing there and uh, eventually caused it to uh, be no good so uh, I took a turn off that and now that turns as well it just doesn't allow the uh, cable to slide uh, over it it, it now uh, allows it to turn with it so uh, that's a minor point that may be helpful because uh, those parts may may become uh, harder to find there that little cable assembly I was happy to have found it uh, recently and put it on there uh, when I did that shaft a couple of months ago. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, I'm getting uh, close to uh, uh, demoing it. Okay, I've got the drive belt installed. Uh, of course, the seat isn't uh, in place and the, the deck's not on it. Uh, and I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to just hold with what I got. Uh, I believe uh, all the adjustments are uh, uh, right and uh, uh, well enough uh, at the moment. Uh, so uh, I'll go ahead and start it and you can see, uh, you know, what to expect uh, initially because, uh, you know, it uh, may be helpful uh, because I'm just not doing anything else right now. So uh, parking brake. Let's give it some charge. on the uh, cones but uh, I don't think that's a problem I think that's really a good thing uh, as this uh, starts to burnish in and uh, break in so uh, yeah no I I'm liking that in the literature uh, on this uh, neutral uh, spring rod uh, it'll tell you to uh, drive it down below the base and uh, you know and I said just leave it flush because on the bench it makes it a lot easier that way there's there's no real need for it to be driven beyond flush underneath. That just sets it up, makes it difficult to, to uh, rest on a bench for all the adjustments. And uh, all that really does, there's two holes down here uh, in the mounting uh, 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 chassis. And that those uh, two nubs hanging out, it just sets it up for the alignment for the other uh, bolts to go in. It's, it's needless. It's over-engineered. It was a nice thought, but uh, it just gets in the way. So as good as the uh, literature is, you know, you still got to use your noggin and, you know, decide if you want to follow that by rote in those areas. Sometimes it uh, uh, makes it more difficult uh, and needlessly so. But that's about the only point uh, I think that uh, 
deserves ignoring. And again, uh, you know, I tend to attack this top nut. You don't have to. And, uh, you know, if you've got that bottom pulley with a, enough collar hanging off of it, you can grab onto that to, uh, you know, drive these lock nuts down exactly where you want them on the thread. But, you know, some, uh, some pulleys down there uh, may not give you much shoulder to, to grab onto. So, you know, to me, this is just uh, what I wanted to do and, and get uh, the most uh, 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 amount of non-threaded shaft down below. And having it uh, right on the uh, uh, end of that uh, shaft is, is the way to do it, uh, for me especially. It was just uh, a, a no-brainer. And uh, here I'll mention that if you put a, uh, a new drive pulley on like I did uh, a couple months ago when I put that uh, new center shaft on, you know, this pulley has uh, a, a longer shoulder. It has uh, uh, more of that key way to, to hang on to. And what that did was it dropped this belt uh, line down somewhat. And, uh, you know, you should pay attention to that uh, because it's uh, probably going to cause you to want to also drop your uh, idler pulley down and... Uh, what I did was I just replaced this idler pulley with one that had more of a, a flared, uh, rounded uh, uh, flange edge. The, the old one uh, just kind of stood up straight and, uh, you know, I could tell on the belt sometimes when I uh, engaged the uh, idler by disengaging the parking brake, you know, it would leave a little uh, bite on that uh, belt and so you know I, I never did really like that pulley where it was it was all right and uh, while everything was up higher it was better but the minute I dropped this down I saw that oh that tendency uh, was increased as this belt you know got closer to that uh, to that uh, uh, sharp edge of the uh, flange so I got a uh, an idler pulley that was uh, taller. It sits up, uh, there's a uh, quarter of an inch more uh, for the uh, belt to ride inside. And I also put a nut behind it as I installed it so that it would hang down lower. And so, you know, it does, it's good. And, uh, you know, I'll disengage and engage. And it does tend to ride uh, very close to the center of that uh, idler now. And uh, even if it does get close to that edge, that's a, a, a flared, uh, rounded uh, edge. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's all better. And, uh, but, you know, pay attention to those things. If you change this pulley, you know, the, the belt line might uh, fall off center here. And, and you might want to do things about that. You know, you could probably just uh, get a different bolt and, and drop it down with spacers and I put the, the nut behind it and that and dropped it down uh, even more but uh, sometimes a, uh, a newer uh, style uh, idler pulley can, can be helpful just because of that uh, uh, you know rounded flange edge I, I, I do like this one better so that's what I did I ran it out I did some mowing and uh, it did well it did uh, quite nicely. The feel was good. Uh, the responsiveness was good. Uh, uh, I really uh, enjoyed it. The, uh, the disc cups uh, uh, always on, on this mower tended on the right to be the strong side so I'd have to dummy it down but uh, when I put the uh, disc cups back in I, I kind of purposely maybe subconsciously uh, you know wanted to see uh, if I flipped them, if if the uh, left side would become the uh, stronger side, and sure enough, it did. Uh, uh, it's now the uh, stronger side. I don't know how by uh, by how much. Uh, I'll find out. But uh, it wasn't much uh, right with the uh, instant adjustment uh, uh, right out of the the so-called box, but uh, a little bit, not much, and. Uh, you know, usually it would be the uh, left side that, uh, you know, I'd try to speed up. But now I want to try to slow it down. But before I do that, uh, I'm going to see uh, how much speed I can get out of the uh, right side to see if I can match it. And like I said, it you know, 
the, the weaker side will not go to infinity. You can't just keep turning this and, and expect it to uh, uh, catch up if it uh, uh, doesn't have it in it. And, you know, you, you'll probably uh, then uh, have the uh, uh, reverse becoming more potent, more torquey, and you'll be losing the uh, front uh, uh, motion. So, you know, I don't know if uh, I'll hit that, but... Uh, so on the right side, to speed it up, it's clockwise on these uh, jam nuts. Uh, on the left side, it's counterclockwise to speed it up. I don't want to speed it up on the left side. The left side is fine. And how you can, uh, you know, always know which is the faster side is, you know, when you're running the levers, whatever lever you have uh, in the forward most position is the weak side. Because, you know, the other side, you have to hang back a little or you'll start, you know, turning, uh, you know, because it'll outpace the right side. So, uh, you know, my right uh, arm was uh, uh, more forward, not, not by much, but, you know, it was obvious that uh, that was the, the new strong side now. And uh, I'll see if I can equalize that. But uh, otherwise, uh, you know, the cones were burnishing in. Uh, uh, they look great. And... Uh, Oh, what else? Uh, you know, there's. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, drive belts. This is a pretty new one. I put this on uh, two months ago when I put that new shaft in, and boy, I sure like this belt. I, I've dialed this one in uh, to the uh, half inch uh, length. This is uh, 39 and a half. Now, that may not be right for yours, uh, your unit because I put on different pulleys and stuff, so... Uh, but uh, this is a, a half inch by 39 and a half, uh, and uh, boy, it's nice and tight. It takes a, a channel lock to put on, and, and be careful when you put these belts on. You can take meat off your fingers if you're not careful. So, you know, I'll encourage you, if you've got a tight belt, don't try to, you know, get up on that fan cover and, and hold it with your hand as, you, as you're doing it. You know, put some channel locks down there on the... Uh, shoulder of the uh, pulley and uh, let it do the work and keep your your fingers away once you get it uh, kind of uh, started up on the on the the pulley but what i'm getting to is that there's a cable that goes down to an idler on the drive belt so you know that by the factory uh, was done so that when you start the motor that drive belt doesn't have much tension on it and that's a good thing but it's not so critical really because while this parking brake is on both of your uh, disc cups you know are, are locked you know with those uh, band brakes they're not going anywhere so you know what can happen is these cones can spin if there's a, a, a little more tension uh, you know with a tight belt and it will uh, you know when you're starting the motor you know if you've got a tight belt even with the uh, idler disengaged with the parking brake on you can pick pick up uh, some uh, uh, movement and you know actually spin the uh, cones but it's it doesn't hurt the starting and uh, I prefer it generally uh, uh, that way to have a, a tighter belt which picks up uh, some cone spinning uh, because you know the belt stretch too so you know if you've got trouble with uh, uh, you know not getting as much torque as you want or wondering why you know speed drops off or you know it's not responsiveness under you know some loads and conditions you know consider you know getting a tighter belt and don't worry about it spinning those cones.
idea. Uh, zero turn is, is great. The friction drive, uh, can they compete with the uh, hydraulic uh, units? Well, yeah, they can compete, but they certainly can't surpass the uh, uh, hydraulic units because uh, they're, they're a lot smoother, and uh, most of them for the mid-drive or the uh, mid-mount uh, decks have uh, bigger tires, which make them a, a little softer ride. This thing is pretty short. The tires are kind of small, and it's it's a little clunky, but most mid-drives are that way. Uh, so it can compete. If you dropped uh, this unit off, a 42-inch deck, uh, next to a hydraulic uh, unit with a 42-inch deck, you know, they're probably going to get done at about the same time. Uh, the cost of uh, running each one of them is going to probably be about the same, but the initial cost of uh, uh, obtaining one of these is, is very low. There was a, a video recently posted, uh, a guy uh, went to a, a, a junkyard or a scrapyard and he bought a Dixon mower that didn't work for $100. And uh, it was the motor, the motor was the problem. So he uh, took the head off, it was a flat head, uh, no va overhead valves. And uh, sure enough, the valve seat had come out and, uh, you know, was causing the motor not to run. So he removed the valve, tapped in the valve seat, put the valve back in, and had a uh, Dixon mower uh, for, I think he said he bought a, a belt maybe. So uh, it came to about $120, and he had a, uh, a working, functioning, uh, mowing, zero-turn mower. It was a Dixon, so that was kind of cool. So, you know, hopefully there'll be more stories uh, like that coming out, you know. This is kind of arcane knowledge about uh, fixing these uh, Dixon mowers, but suddenly at the end stage of the so-called game, uh, we're getting more more information. I put a little bit out. Other people are starting to put more out. So, uh, you know, we may have uh, more stories. But uh, until then, uh, you know, I'm happy as a clam with uh, my little unit. I've spiffed it up pretty good. I think the left side here is still a little fast. I'll slow it down uh, and get that. Uh, but, you know, it runs out the same uh, when they're fully extended. So. I don't know, maybe that's just the stiffness of that uh, uh, preload on the uh, uh, torque bushing uh, springs. I could loosen that side up a little, maybe. Okay, so the uh, final adjustment, uh, very subtle after mowing on a couple of properties. And, uh, you know, I focus more on the left side, of course, because that's the uh, stronger, uh, faster side. I dumbed it down a little. Uh, first, uh, I uh, broke loose these uh, two jam nuts and then uh, also clamped on down below with some uh, small vice grips so I could uh, not only uh, release some tension from the top threads but down below also so I could uh, actually uh, uh, release the preload uh, from uh, on top and below. You know, it's a minor point, but uh, oh, there's there was probably a full three quarters of a turn uh, uh, you know if I added those uh, two uh, actions up then the the, uh, the uh, jam nuts uh, I uh, uh, tightened them and then uh, rotated the whole uh, uh, assembly down to slow it down just a hair uh, tightened up the uh, stopper nut on top the 7 16 and uh, that was pretty much it uh, you know I I did tamper uh, with this uh, a minute to try to speed it up, uh, but then uh, returned it back to its original uh, position. So th those are the adjustments, and uh, you know, it, uh, it may be the arcane knowledge, it's the uh, subtle stuff, but uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not really that mysterious, it's, it's just subtle. So uh, I say don't rush in to uh, do the final adjustments if you're your uh, uh, instant adjustments uh, right off the bench and into the unit uh, uh, seem to be pretty close. Go ahead and run it for uh, a day or two, uh, mow a few uh, times, and uh, then go in for the adjustments. So that's what I did, and uh, it's turned out well. 
So yeah, I'm going to just get on with it and uh, uh, have a blast uh, as I usually do with this stuff. But uh, I'll uh, put a contour cut. I, I do like this yard. Uh, this property is for sale. It's a former neighbor of mine. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've mowed it in the past while he still lived here. But he's moved on. He closed his business and uh, I broke up with his girlfriend. Uh, they they uh, were joint partners in the business. But uh, no more. And uh, I, he's probably going to pay me uh, with a handgun on this. Uh, I have a sister coming uh, out to visit me. And uh, she wants to uh, carry a concealed handgun. And, you know, I, I want to be the one to give her her first hand. So, uh, you know, it'll be a cool gift. It's a, a Taurus uh, Millennium model, 9mm compact. You know, and I, I carry a, a, a weapon with me. And, you know, I don't, I don't use a state permission slip either. But, uh, yeah, no, this, uh, this mower, it, it just keeps on giving, you know. It, Ways into things like that, you know, a gift for a sister, uh, you know, as payment uh, in the handguns for, you know, uh, a sister. It's, uh, it's just cool. Okay, I'm going to get back to it. And so there you have it. Uh, a pretty nice finish cut. Uh, this uh, fr forefront area got about a pass and a half on it. Out in the uh, far corners, I just gave it a single pass. And, you know, it left a, a little bit of the winnowing lines in between each uh, uh, other uh, uh, return pass because I use that blocker on the side. I don't just let it side discharge. So it does leave a, a little winnowing line unless you go down the center line like I did up, up front here and uh, you know come back around it and it's always pushing it further and further away so you won't see the winnowing line on this. It, it takes uh, a little longer to go around in that manner but uh, I like it uh, uh, for that reason but on the pool I just went round and round until it got too redundant uh, in those uh, eccentric circles uh, that I just do in the corner. I just go back and forth, back and forth, and it does leave the uh, winnowing line. But, uh, you know, back there, uh, people aren't paying that much attention, and uh, uh, the owner's uh, quite happy. So uh, this is it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm declaring uh, this uh, mower done with the new cones. Uh, everything else is good. Uh, so, yeah, it's just going to serve me well for a much longer okay bye bye